Hello, Gunther. It's an honor. We have the saying in Estonia that uh, whenever you see something to uh, spot your finger on, then you just go and help to fix it. What can we do to fix uh, our situation to uh, live in a more sustainable environment? You know, I, I've been working for 40 years in trying to fix things <laughs> and I know it doesn't work to go just and push the button. Yeah. It doesn't work. <laughs> we need to really change the mindset. Mm. And, and, you know, again, after 40 years, I've seen two generations coming by and the mindset is not changing. No, not even a tiny bit. Not enough. Mm. So we need to work on how do we change the mindset. <laughs> and that's why I'm telling stories to children. Yeah. Uh, you know, I am so convinced that if a child listens every day to a great story, the world will change. Not when the child grows up, because the child is the only one who can convince mom, who can convince dad. Because when mom and dad are not willing to listen, nor to the media, nor to the politician, mm. nor to friends, when the kids are insisting, they do listen. Mm. How can you impact the children in that sense? What are the tools? Surprise them. Surprise them. You have to beat TikTok in content. You have to beat the video mm. game with surprise and attacks. Because video games is, you know, oh, there's an attack from there and I got to be ready for this. So, Get the mind of the child so activated and so challenging and surprising, but surprises which are not being beaten. Surprises of making you stronger so you know you can do better than your parents. And there's a wonderful spirit in a child that when a child sees the chance to do better than that mm. and to surprise that or mom, the child can do it. But what uh, are the tools that we can, uh, we can change our children to that direction? What can we do? We need to make the programs. We need to give the education as parents, as grown-ups. I think we have to stop thinking we can educate kids. Mm. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, didn't we sing uh, Pink Floyd, Roger Waters? Uh, <laughs> we don't need no education. We don't need no mind Indeed. control. Indeed. So if you were singing that, mm. let's apply it. So let's not do it with our children. We have mm. to stop thinking we can educate our children. And by the way, if you are only teaching your kids everything that you know is the best, then we'll do as bad as we're doing today. Because with the best of our efforts, we have not been able to make a change. So something needs to go different. And that is a degree of liberty mm. we have to give to the next generation. We cannot ask them to do what we have done and do it better and therefore have better results. We have to give them the liberty to discover amazing things that can be done. And our goal is to really create that horizon, that space to navigate in with a great degree of freedom. But within the framework, you have to put some boundaries. That is what I think parents mm -hmm. and adults can do, is create boundaries. What would be the right boundaries at the moment? The boundary for me is nature. I mean, what has worked for billions of years in nature, that's my boundary. And I need to cleanse my insight from all the preconceived ideas of what is possible and what is not possible. And I need to open it up and say, oh my God, look at that whale pumping a thousand liters with six volts direct currents. Six volts direct currents. There's not a battery that works with that and yeah, pumps exactly. a thousand liters. But the boundary is set by the whale. Mm. So what I think we need to do is we need to change the way we perceive planetary boundaries. We need to change the way we look at the donut economy. Mm. We need to not be too analytic in our choices of the boundaries. We need to let our heart speak. And when I see a whale or a family of whales, and I know that each one of these whales is able to talk to a friend whale over yeah. 3,000 kilometers. I wonder why do we need 5G? <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, what the hell are we wasting our time debating 5G when this whale can talk to the baby 3,000 kilometers away yeah. without making noise, mm -hmm. without having electromagnetic radiation? Mm -hmm. So that is the boundary, the boundary I'm asking for is not the boundaries we know. The boundaries I'm asking for is the reality of how nature lives 
thrives mm -hmm. and evolves. But to take responsibility, has uh, our generations and generations, the generations before, we have kind of screwed this planet a little. How, how can we uh, help our kids to uh, deal with the stuff we have left behind? So, first of all, we have to be realistic, yeah. transparent. Mm -hmm. Transparency is very important, but I think we've gone too far with transparency. Mm. Uh, let me explain with two simple words, analysis, paralysis. Mm. We have analyzed in our search for transparency yeah. so much that we have paralyzed everything. Because yeah, every time the news is worse, mm. every time we, the solutions don't seem to work, every time we find more corrupt politicians, mm. every time we find what we don't like, and as a result, we feel insignificant. That's what has to change. And also create blame, a lot of blame. Well, and, and you're responsible, the finger yeah, exactly. pointing. The, this finger is pointing at people. <laughs> and, and, you know, uh, mm. we also have to point ourselves. That game has not helped us beyond the situation yeah. we are. So my, my real approach is analysis, no. Too much analysis leads to paralysis. Mm. We make great declarations and we don't pass to action. Why? because we don't have the self-confidence, because we are so scared. I mean, in French, there is a word which is so beautiful in French, la trouille. You are s scaring the S-H-I-T out of you. <laughs> you know, you, oh my God, and, and, and you don't take action yeah, because exactly. you're scared. Mm. And so what we need is to build self-confidence. So the emotional intelligence becomes mm. a critical part in overcoming the analysis that we have made, because the analysis blocks us from doing, gives us a paralysis. So we need to have the confidence that we can change, not the world, we can first change the rules of the game. Because the world is ruled by a group of people and a group of institutions, and they have set down the rules according to which everyone is playing. So what the first thing we need to be clear about is we're not just going to go against what is yes. there. We're going mm. to change the rules of the game. Because going against, you know, if you're a little, a little mouse and you're looking at this elephant, are you going to beat the elephant? I wish you good luck. <laughs> if you think you can beat him, then you're beaten already because that is non-responsible yeah. confidence. What you need to know is which are the fights we can win. And that's strategic. What fight can I win? Because we're going to need to fight for this mm. transition. This is not going to come easy because too many people have so much to lose and those who will yes. gain are not sure if it will work. And so as a result, we have to be clear. What are the rules of the game we can change? Mm. In a sense, this part of uh, this group of people that has made the rules just now, we can call it a society, but to change it, maybe we can uh, be like a united community. What do you think? You're, you're spot on. Community is key. We have eliminated community from our yeah. environment mm -hmm. because we have an economic model whereby the only thing that counts is are you cheap? Mm. This, is, this is terrible. If you're cheap, then you have the right to win on the market. You know, as long as we celebrate being cheap as the tool to be competitive, you don't have community. You only have trade. Now, life is not about trading on the basis of the lowest price. Life is about creating community where you have resilience, where you have joy, where you know how to overcome the challenges that will come. Challenges will yeah. not be eliminated. The force to understand the challenges mm. and make the right choices when the challenges are there is not for one individual to do, it's for a community. And that is why quite a few of my initiatives the last few years are focusing on building community. So I'm not substituting a product with a product that has no carbon emissions. I'm not substituting a plastic for something that is biodegradable. I'm changing a product that was a commodity mm. into something that can create, create community. In a sense, all this uh, let's do it uh, world, it's like a huge community of people. What tips would you give to this organization? Well, first of all, um, 
you think about the world, but you do everything local. I mean, that's been for 30 years the slogan, yeah. you know, think global, act local. We need to act local. Now, my biggest critique to my generation, you're younger, your <laughs> generation after. <laughs> well, thank you so much. But uh, the biggest critique to my generation is that we had a lot of wisdom and a lot of wise ideas, but mm. we didn't do anything. And if we did it, we limited it to being a good anecdote, but mm. we never succeeded in changing statistics. Why, so, why was that? Well, because we were so happy with the case study, mm. with the story, that we never took it to a broader base, yes. involving more and more people so that you change statistics. Mm. Um, you know, there was an inventory made a couple of years ago of more than a million agricultural initiatives to turn the land use productive, organic, using biodiversity and all what we know and we like. One million initiatives, statistics have not changed. What does it tell us? It tells us that we were too happy, too satisfied, mm. too soon with a tiny little yes. initiative that made impact in mm. our minds, but we never shared it and mm. we never secured that it would reach out to many more communities. That is where we have failed. Not because there were no good ideas, mm. not because there were not enough intentions, not because there were not enough people. We just didn't bother taking it yes. mainstream. We were happy with our little story. Mm -hmm. So first suggestion is be ambitious, think big. First, you know, don't be satisfied of doing 30% less carbon emissions. <laughs> no, 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 it's zero. Mm -hmm. Don't say 2050, say in a year's time. I'll give you the example. When I read in 89, you were barely born, <laughs> when I read in 89 mm. that there was going to be a climate crisis. Did you I, believe it? I said, if this is true, mm -hmm. then my factory I must build must be a zero emissions factory. So I committed in 89 to be a zero emissions builder of factories. Mm. In 92, I inaugurated the first zero emissions factory in Europe. And that means that took me three years. I don't understand how it is ever possible that we tolerate people saying that they will be net zero in 2050. Yes. Uh, excuse me, 27 <laughs> years to go? I mean, I'm not here anymore. I mean, this doesn't make any mm -hmm. sense to make commitments because mm -hmm. if you make up your mind, then you can do it. Mm -hmm. So if I, as a 30-year-old, was able to do that 30 years ago, well, why can't all those with all the money and all the resources not do it. They don't do it because they're in the trap that I found many of us is we're thinking too small, too local, mm -hmm. not ambitious enough, and we're not sharing it. Yeah. Well, let's do it. World started from 50,000 Estonians that gathered in one day in 2008. And now we can see there is 191 countries and millions of volunteers all over the world. So we have done well on that step, at least to think big. Well, you see, when you want to mobilize other people, you don't need convincing. The hearts need to connect. Oh. And so what you as Estonians succeeded with this initiative, the mm. Clean Up Day, is that you succeeded in speaking to the hearts of people. And when you speak to the heart of people, then people engage then people commit, then people yeah. do. We also related to the problem that um, everybody can relate to. Trash, garbage. Yeah. yeah. Well, it needs to come home, as we say in English. It needs to come to your home. And when it comes into your home, you will be able to associate. But the key thing is, why do it one day a year? Why not 365? Why? And you know, what we need to know is that life, community, is a network, mm. is a network of connections. And for a network to work, to function, you need patterns. And so we do not only need to have a product substituting another product, a dirty one with a biodegradable exactly. one. We need to have these patterns reemerge. And that is how we are able to transform society, not by changing products, but by changing the patterns. And, and, and that is what I'm going to speak about today 
as well at uh, at uh, presentation is that if you want to have a vision towards the future you need to see how by a small change the whole system can transform how can we include the children in this uh, way of thinking now then we get to round up the, um, the idea so I have my way of working and it's not the only way of working. There are many ways you can reach out to children. But I think there is a time proven way of working and that is called storytelling. Telling the kids a good story. Would you tell us a story you would tell to a kid who, who would in the future change the world? You know, I would always start by looking at a tree. A tree is very symbolic mm. in, in life. I mean, it's the tree of life. It's life of the tree. So I would look at a tree and I would not explain how the tree is operating, but I would ask questions. And the question is, how can this be the strongest and the longest living tree ever in our country? And of course, the tree needs sun. But when the sun shines, it will have more leaves. When it has more leaves, more leaves will drop. When more leaves will drop, then there's no recycling of leaves uh, because there's no tree that keeps its own leaves to be reattached in the spring. The leaves of no use to the tree are given to the mushrooms, uh, to the ants, uh, yeah. to the earthworms. And, and everyone is busy turning this into rich humus. Mm -hmm. And when the tree has a lot of good and rich humus, that means that it will have much more nutrients. And when it has more nutrients, uh, then it will have more flowers. And when there are more flowers, then there are more bees. And when there are more bees, there's more pollination. When there's more pollination, there are more fruits. And when there are more fruits, there are more birds. And when the birds are coming, they all come and drop their little excrements on the bottom yes. of the tree, which will give such a rich nutrition to the tree, thanks to the rain that is going to fall at the same time. <laughs> and, and the story is very clear that I can only be the strongest if I give everything that I do not need to someone else. Because that's what the tree is doing. Because then everyone else will give the tree what it needs, but it never even had to ask for. The tree never asked for, make me humus, I will pay you. No, 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 it's all taken care of. And, and the birds never thought about dropping the shit on the, on the soil it was so enriching for, for every microorganism around. But the tree knows one thing also, that it must work with everyone. So if the tree doesn't like the earthworm, because the tree never bothered asking the question, what's your head and what's your tail? It doesn't know <laughs> what is head or tails. And therefore it's embarrassed. And when we're embarrassed, we kind of mm -hmm. say we don't like. If the tree were, use, were to use all its force to chase all the earthworms away, then the tree knows it will never ever be the longest living tree in the forest. So this is my way of approaching a child. And, and, and I can adjust the story to a three-year-old, to a five-year-old, to a 10-year-old, to a 15-year-old. To a 50-year-old. To a 50-year-old. And so the, the key is that we have to carry a wisdom this was the elders of the Indian nation. These are the traditional cultures. They carried the wisdom. This is not science. This is mm -hmm. wisdom. And the wisdom, I can talk about the enzymes that are used by the earthworm. And I can talk about, uh, you know, the turpentines that are used by the <laughs> mushroom. But that's not to the point. That we can figure out. What we very often don't figure out anymore is that everyone has to work together to celebrate life. And accept each other the way we are. And, and, and actually discover little by little mm. why it's so great, great you are so different. I mean, what a surprise you are so different. <laughs> I had no clue, oh, that's your tail. Mm. Oh my God, now I know where to have to look for. But I don't see the eye, so I didn't know. I didn't know where is your mouth and your <laughs> anus is as big as your mouth. My God, I don't know what to say. I'm embarrassed here. You know, this is, this is what we have to break down. This mm. is the no that we cannot accept. And mm. that wisdom of being ready to not only share the wisdom, but to discover over and over again by telling the same story over and over again. I mean, I have six children and I know that if I tell the story and I change something in the story, the kids complain <laughs> because they like the story to be yes, predictable. Exactly. Now, it's the responsibility of the parent 
to add unpredictability. It's not predictable. Surprise. There's something else in there. And that surprise game by also living and talking beyond boundaries, because of course in school they cannot talk about the bird droppings, that's excrements and that's mm. not what the kid really likes to call it. But you, you have to play mm. with boundaries because children will only learn the framework when you play with the mm. beyond the limits of the framework. That's the only way we know where the framework is, <laughs> because otherwise it's all just in our minds. So to me, the key is the story. And if you tell stories, and you build on stories. And then the stories at the same time are linked to concrete things you can see around you. But still have an element of surprise in them. Because surprise <laughs> is the rule of the game. Yes. I mean, if there's no surprise, everything is predictable. So Life I think is boring. this is the tip we can take to all the environmental organizations out there to Let's Do It World as well and to all our viewers. Thank you so much for this interview. Thank you.